So next we have Chris and Tom talking to us about Code Club. Okay, we did pilot um, Code Club. We've been working in with Plainview and Dodge Center on this, so we thought we'd we'd give you a little heads up on what it's all, what it's all about. So this is actually a slide I took from one of my Code Club presentations, introducing myself. Um, yes, all my fancy degrees and blah blah blah. If you really want to read it, there it is. Um, does anybody not know who I am? I'm sure I've been with all of you. Thanks, Terry. Appreciate it. <laughs> um, anyway, my name is Chris Austin. Um, my job title here at Selco is Technical Services Assistant. I do some cataloging. I do some PC repair. I do some PC upgrading. I, I do things to annoy Mike because he, I can. <laughs> um, but my credentials actually line up with Code Club a little better. I do have a bachelor's degree in software application development. No thanks to Terry. <laughs> <laughs> well, and this is Tom. So my name is Tom Rochka. I am pretty much recognize most of you. I think um, there's actually very few of you I don't. But um, I am the network specialist here at Selco. Um, there's some of my stuff too, and these are all taken from our Code Club stuff that we uh, introduce our stuff. So, um, yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. So our Selco Code Club, um, we kind of organized this as a pilot project after Chris and I were actually going to volunteer, start um, possibly doing this as a rollout plan, just kind of in our spare time. Um, we brought it to Anne, and she said to you know, roll it out as kind of a pilot. So. What? Yep. So what the code club does is we organize programming projects, and they kind of revolve around different activities for the kids um, that are in the public library setting. Um, they can come in, they can do all this. Um, there's going to be a lot of programming logic incorporated into this, um, but it gives them kind of a hands-on experience with code and doing activities. Um, but some of the stuff we've come up with, though, we it's the kids have liked it a lot. They're kind of they're a lot of fun, um, and one of the things we've noticed right off is this actually does go with building teamwork, building skills, pretty heavily. Um, um, so our meeting timelines, and we thought the kind of the best way to organize our presentation for this was to actually kind of do one of our sessions. So we've kind of developed a small thing, and what we start with is usually a meeting timeline. Um, we'll do a talk about Code Club. Um, we'll have a little activity for the kids, usually, um, and it's, it's completely away from the keyboard. Um, I know last time at Plainview, we did a thing with um, whiteboards and programming logic. Um, and then after that, we'll have a work time where we will go into doing actual programming, depending on what the kids' levels are. Um, we do a mix of Scratch and the Python programming language. And if you have any questions um, and you kind of want to get in contact with us, we do have a small blo uh, blog for the Code Club. Um, and it's just codeclub.selco.info. And things over to you. Yes. So like it, like, it, like it was hinted at, we thought it would be more fun to show you. So I am going to do a little mini Code Club session. Ha, 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 ha. And that's our normal title slide. Yay. So we're going to talk about pixels, and I picked pixels because everybody kind of can relate to pixels. You don't necessarily need any programming knowledge to understand what a pixel is and what it does. So a pixel, as defined in the dictionary, is the smallest element of an image that can be individually processed in a video display system. And basically how this was going to relate to us in Code Club is that computer screens are divided into a grid of small that's called pictures, which is pixels, which is short for picture elements, which is something that they're going to have to deal with when building sprites and, and animations and things. So here's an example of what pixels actually look like on your screens. They were blown up. Um, old TV screens up there on the upper right, old PC, the big ones here. And then most of our screens these days are going to look like this if you magnify them. Now, pixels start out in our computers as numbers. These are hexadecimal, the, and that's it. You know what I'm talking about. Hexadecimal. Thank you, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> so this actually stores a 15 by 15 pixel image, which looks like that. 
So what we're going to do today is we're going to pretend it's 1984 and deal just with one-bit images. And so this is how a black and white display works. It's either off or it's on. There's no choice for red, green, blue, whatever. So this makes storing numbers much easier because we can use regular decimal numbers instead of hexadecimal numbers. So to get ready for activity here, each line represents a row on the screen. And the first number always relates to the number of white pixels. If the first pixel is black, the line will begin with a zero. For example, 132 becomes 132. And then four white, one black, one white, one black, or one white, excuse me, four black. And then, like I said, if a line needs to start with black, it'll start with a zero, and then there's only one, three, one, blah, blah, and on, so on and so forth. Yay, and now it's your turn. So we do have a U-turn activity. I figured everybody would have a lot of questions and that we'd be better off, off divulging what you guys want to know versus what I want to tell you. So we do have a small activity that is very similar to the kinds of activity worksheets that we would hand out. It's actually in the instructions. So basically, we're storing numbers to represent pixels. Right? OK, just like, just like the hexadecimal small example I gave you. So we have one white, three black, two white. So every time there's a comma, it's going to flip. So if it was black, it'll be white. If it was white, it'll be black. That's the slideshow, I think. Yep. Yeah, you can tell I took this from an from an uh, activity book for British school children, can't you? <laughs> <laughs> so in general, this is um, how our sessions begin and kind of how they will. We'll, we'll just do a simple introduction. Um, we'll have a small kind of programming logic section, and then we'll do a small activity, usually a group activity with the kids. In this case, it wasn't group, but it kind of ran through a, pro a concept in programming in a way. Um, and then after this, we usually then we'll have time for them to work on their programming projects that we have um, that are part of a curriculum that we have developed and we've used from a website called codeclub.world. Codeclub.world. Um, and um, there's curriculums in there for working with uh, Scratch. Uh, that's a pretty much a web app. Uh, web it's a web app. Thing, it's basically, so. it's like being able to program with Legos, where you have a little block that does something versus having to type in line after line of code. So there's tons of projects for them with that, and then um, if they progress far enough in our curriculum, then we graduate them to working with the Python programming language. And and all through that, we while we're there, we offer them assistance. Um, I know in our, we've uh, kind of started working on that grand project, but... Yeah. We're not quite sure how that's going to gonna pan, out, pan out yet. So, but that's, uh, that's our pilot Code Club pro program. So, cool. any questions? I just want to throw one thing out there real quick since we have a couple of minutes. Okay. I was trying to get us back on schedule. I know, I know, but I'm just going to pull you right back off. Uh, just one quick thing. I don't want to promise anything that I ultimately can't deliver, but. We are working on an LSTA grant project right now, which will fund um, kits to make it possible for you to run code clubs at your own library if you are interested. So it's got to get funded. A lot of other things need to happen first, but we are trying. So stay tuned. Thanks.